you look into things around you and say, how is God doing? God says, oh, look at the different eyes. Look at the different eyes. Which eyes? Eyes that says, listen, God is gone for you. He has prepared what? The way for you. We are harm, brothers and sisters. We are harm. More harm, less tragata. This is how you look. But the minute you set your mind on things on the world, you 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 come to Psalm one thirty nine verse five. We are harmed, but let's start attack. Things don't go your way. You understand? Know you close your eyes. Fix it on the things that are above. And as you fix on things that are above, you find verse 5 of Psalm 139. That says, He has gone before me. He has gone into my future. There is what? Hope. what? There is hope. I'm in his presence. And, and, and he says, listen to this. He said, the psalmist was, ask, was asking, if I hide from there, I hide from there, no, there's something. He says, your presence that you carry. <laughs> ah. Your presence that you, that you carry when. You carry the presence of the Lord. The presence that you carry, you carry it. Pastor Luan, if you can have that understanding, the Bible says in this Psalms again, he says, he says, he says, he says, he says Oh, I'm thinking about you every minute, every hour. You are in my thoughts. That's what God says. You are in my thoughts. Every minute, every second, every hour. Okay, maybe those of you who have had a crush, you, you can understand this thing better. When you have a crush, you have a crush. You have a crush. You have a crush. That's how you must think about God when he thinks about you. He says, for your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night, not into the night, into your night. That means that hour when things are bad, that hour the presence of the Lord brings light. That is why the Bible says thy word is a lamp to my feet. What does that mean when the Bible says thy word is lamp to my feet? In other words, in building my portals. No, not you. Not you. When you walk, there's a portal. Bah! You just turn this way. Bah! There's a portal. Oh, danger there. You turn this way. Your presence is everywhere. Bringing light into my night. Say, I have a future. Say, I have a future. Say, I have a future. 
Say, I have a future. La letter of verse 12. La letter of verse 12. La letter of verse 12. Verse 12. There's no such thing as darkness within you. The night to you is as bright as a day. There's no difference between the two. That's how God is. You know, don't take God as a human being. I hear what I'm saying, church. Don't thank God that he's a human being like you are. No, you, whether you look like God. Uh, uh, you look like God. Listen, don't think God, God, God looks like you. No, no, you look like God. It's just like, it's just like, oh, oh. let's say I have a child. And then somebody says to the child, uh, says, says, I mean, says to me, does that make sense? Eh? Eh? That's, that's how we think of God. Because the child comes from me. I've heard it many times. So that, 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 that's the picture you take it to God. No, there's no darkness in God. That's why when you walk in this life, you must walk with that understanding. Know that your ending is right. No, listen to me. No amount of bad news must deter you. I'm not motivating you. I'm telling you the truth. See, when you motivate, it's going to be all right. No, no, I'm not telling you it's going to be alright. I'm telling you what it is. I don't know whether you understand that. There's no darkness in God. Thy way is lamp to my feet. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. That is a fact. It's a fact of life. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness, thou are with me. Not that you are going to be with me. No. You are with me. That's why there is no night in God. There's no night. He has given you his presence. The day you received Jesus, he came and he lived in your heart. He never left you. When you say, Jesus, come into my life, he came. You open your heart, he came. He stayed there. And when he stayed there, that brings light into your night. That brings light into your night. The Lord has gone into your future. You know, when we grew up, we used to quote this verse. Maybe we did not understand the verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. I don't know, in this church, we have, we have not quoted it so much. But when we grew up, we used to quote this verse a lot. Put that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, I, I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. That's what God thinks about me. Hmm? Now, if, 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 you think, if you think along those lines, that God, I will not worry. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. For this verse, I wouldn't, uh, you, you, you know, my fears are cured. 
There are many things in life that can bring so much fear into everyone. When you look, Langa Pandu, Mugaba Zalwan, Nebu Shatilu, Ibat Divorce Aba Zalwan. And Satan puts fear when it comes to you. Mugaba Zalwan, Gwendega Lugba Zalwan. Listen, the fact that things are happening in Zalwan doesn't mean it must happen to you. I want to repeat this. If something is contrary to the word of God, happening to someone else, reject it. How Satan attacks the church. You look at many doctors, they've got fear. They live in fear that they're going to get sick one day. Because of the sickness that they interact with. Oh, there's a study that has been done. So many doctors die of the diseases that they are curing their patients from. Because they fear what they see. Now, we have a lot of poverty. Maybe you are in a situation where there's a lot of poverty around you. You've been trying and trying and trying and trying. Nothing happens. Satan says, Then you are seven up chair. You've been trying and trying and trying. Let me tell you. Don't believe it. Tell Satan, I'll be the first one. Oh. Oh. Don't believe it. I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to someone. I say I'm talking to someone. Don't believe it. Maybe you are here. You've been saying and saying and saying. And then things turn, turn out that way. I'm here to tell you today. That you have a bright future. <laughs> okay, let me, let, 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 let's do this. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Let's do this. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Let's start with the, with the we're going to read it in two versions. TPT and Amplified. I don't know which one to start with. Amplified or TPT. Let's start with TPT. Let's do this. If, I, if, if you fail to listen to God in this verse, just, just listen to this verse. This is God. All scripture have been breathed by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Is it from God? I want us to read all of us. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Let's read all of us. Read there. It's poetry, okay? People that will fulfill the destiny he has given each one of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born. Can you notice that? When? Even when? Before you were born. God planned it in advance. Our destiny and the good works we will do to fulfill it. Hey, young girl, come in. I want you to read this one. Even before I can be sure, even before I was born, God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would do to fulfill it. Say it again. I can be sure before I was born, God planned in advance my destiny and the good works we I would do to fulfill it. Again. I tell you, so even, even before I was born, mm -hmm. God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would do to fulfill it. Again. 
I turned this up before, even before I was born, mm -hmm. God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would be to fulfill it. I turned this way even before I was born. God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would be to fulfill Again. it. I turned this way even before I was born. God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would be to fulfill it. The last time. I turned this way even before I was born. God planned in advance my destiny and the good works I would be to fulfill it. I, I, I don't know what more do you want. You know, before you were born, you have a bright future. No, no, no. Before, the, he, he, God planned these things in advance. I was alone. I was trying to make you to be aware because this is you. So in other words, don't don't look at the life around you. Look up. Set your mind. Set your mind. Listen, he says, we have become his poetry. You know, like a, a poetry, like, poetry. It's like a, a porter. Okay, these things we don't know it. Then they do certain things. That's what it means. Why it's poetry. That means God does something. It's like we find the moon, the moon, the moon, the You know these kind of things that they do. It's a, it's a porter, yes. It's a porter. They do. It's like seeing this. It's like labo, unkul unkul. Recreated in Christ. That means the day when I got born again. That means I, the day I was born again. God imparted that day my destiny. That day, he says, hey, hey, before you were born, God planned in advance whether you must live what has been planned. That's what you must be. Live what has been planned. I, I'm living. When I preach to you like this, I'm living what... You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you understand? Do, you, do you hear what I'm saying? Now, there, there is a place for you. Nobody that is here tonight, this morning must go out and say, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just one. I'm just a nobody. Listen, after this verse, in this church, I hear someone say I'm a nobody. God planned in advance. Whether you but setting guluben. Just rise up and say, Mina, I don't belong to the pigs. Eh? I, I, don't, I don't live with the pigs, eh? Because I'll get dirty, I'll be, I'll be mad. See, I ne 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 So you, you, you better rise up and say, I don't belong here. I don't belong at Tingulube. You see. A name has a tendency of following someone. See, you see, people used to call me stupid. Everybody I find, I, every, even now I see old people call me, I just look. <laughs> I don't answer. I don't answer to that. When I say stupid, I look. I don't answer. Because words are powerful. There are things I don't answer to. Listen, there are things you must not answer. God planned it in advance. Your destiny. You have a destiny. Look at Psalm 139 verse. We're going to come back. Look at Psalm 139 verse 16. Look at Psalm 139 verse 16. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. You see, you see for this verse. For this verse. You, see, uh, you saw who you create. You saw who you created. Me. 
before I became me. <laughs> and then it didn't end there. Before I ever seen the light of day, it didn't end there. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded. Eh? Young people, you see, there are things when you learn, when you when you hear messages like this one, you want, there are things that must not happen to you, which has happened to your parents. Hmm? I'm telling you, your parents never knew that there was a book written about them. But when we are I am saying you to return this. There's a book. Just read it. Just read the book. This is it. That's number one. Then number two of reading the book. Okay, I'll come to that. That's number one. This is a book written about you. Do you know that you can find your name here? Eh? Do you know that? You can. But she has already said her name. Already. You saw who you created. God saw. I, 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 I'll see mistake. You know when you tell people about the pegab, we say I see mistake. Because they don't believe it. They define themselves based on what it, the circumstances around them. When you believe the Bible, that's the only thing that can take you out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's nothing that can take you out now, corner, corner, except the Bible. Let me tell you, people they say to us the answer. True and not true. It's not true if you don't know who this Jesus. But it's true if you know who is this Jesus. Look at me. Listen to me, church. I am telling you, when we say Jesus is the answer, it's true and it's not true. It's not true if you don't know this Jesus. It is true if you know. For example, I'm telling you that, listen, everything God wrote about you is written. Listen, sometimes when you're facing persecution in life, there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with you. When you face persecution, nothing wrong with you. Persecution is part and part package of your life. And this, this church up today, I fully go to my church and we will see when they will face persecution. They don't want to hear that word. Mm -mm. The Bible says God will give you blessings with persecution. Jesus said it. He says, I will bless you with persecutions. And there's nothing wrong. And persecutions are good because they keep you down. They keep you humble. Okay. <laughs> like yesterday, I'm going to a funeral. And this guy, <laughs> when this guy comes in, hey, I tell some vulgar to me, I was like, at first, I didn't understand this guy. What is he saying? <laughs> oh, he's talking to me. Then he calls my name. He's like, Pastor, come here. I said, ah. Okay, I said, oh, man. I'm not here to disturb your peace. Continue. I'm just saying that persecution is part and parcel. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And I said, thank you, Lord, that I'm part and parcel of those that are being persecuted. Yeah. He's just talking, talking, talking. I thought he's just talking about something else. And then he's talking to me. He says, you guy, you go to Deben to go and get something to grow the church. I say, ah, this man. <laughs> I'm serious, church. But that's not the point. The point is, persecution is part of your journey. 
Don't have a color when people talk bad about you. No, don't cry. Just thank God. Our color when certain things are happening to you. Know that you don't feel pain. No. Know what must happen to you. People cheat. Cheat you. Don't cry. Don't cry. So what did you miss? Mix him a coat to Mazalwan. Mazalwan by mixing him a coat. Just leave those things. You lose big time. Sometimes things are coming for your promotion. You're bitter. You're angry. You can't see the light. If there's one thing that has taken Bazalwani backwards, is this thing called bitterness and anger. That's the major thing. You think about let me just give you about the, the destiny of someone in Acts 16. You think about the Apostle Paul and Silas. These guys, Baba Fagema chains. Instead of them complaining, they worship God. Because they knew who they were. In Exodus, go read Exodus in the Bible it says Paul and Silas were in prison. They worshipped the Lord. And suddenly God came to their rescue. When you are a person who has a destiny, don't focus on the events. Focus on where God is taking you. Am I talking to someone here? Okay, let's, let, let's go back to, to, to Ephesians 2. Let's finish this thing. Then I'm going to finish this thing with, with, with uh, put the amplifier there. Ephesians 2. But one, for, with, with these verses, ne, I, 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 I will read the Bible. Ne? Look, look at this. By the way, I did not write the Bible, in, in case if you think I did. Ne? If you think I did, I didn't write it. Now, no, 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 no. Let's read all of us. For we are what? God's own handiwork. That's the same word that says we are his poetry, you know? His poetry, the same word. We are God's what? own what? Handiwork. His workmanship. Now, let's continue. Recreated to our in Christ Jesus. Born anew. That means we are born again. What is the reason for us being born again? If you did not know why you were born again, here is the reason. Being born again, why? That we may do what? Those good works which God pre-planned, predestined, planned beforehand. For who? For us. Ah, you see this one? This one. Can you read louder, all of us? What? Taking what? Parts which he prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Mm. Living a good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Oh, lift up your arm of strength. Say, oh Lord. This day onwards, I am taking parts that were prepared for me ahead of time. I'm living a good life. That was prearranged for me. This is your story. Say, this is your story. 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 Church, it is your story. You are taking parts that they prepared for you ahead of time. You will not falter. I say, you will not falter. I declare, declare to you that none of your steps shall slide. None of your steps shall slide. Say, oh Lord, my steps are as a shining light. They are shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Say, my steps are being ordered by you, Lord. I am stepping into my destiny. 
I am stepping into my destiny. I am stepping into my destiny. This is who I am. One last verse. We, 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 we go, I'm going to tell you how to do that. One last verse. Second Peter, chapter number two, chapter number one, verse three. Second Peter. Now, these verses, have you written these verses? Now, I'm going to give you an exam. I want you to meditate on the scriptures that I've given you. Second Peter, chapter number one, verse three. Ah, 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 ah. For this verse, ah, verse three and four. For this verse, oh, I will download the TPT. Listen, it says everything. Can you, can you, are you there? Are you there? Everything we can ever need. Ah. Everything, not something, everything I could ever need. Where? In this life. And in godliness, that means in righteousness, in the way I do things of, for God, has already ah, been deposited to me. That means, you know what God is saying? He's saying, he's saying, listen, 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 listen. The day you receive Jesus Christ, I deposited everything that you have, that will ever need in this life. And then I, what I deposit, I even write it in my pants. So that when you take those steps, it, everyone I'm about to deposit you. What do you do? You just go and withdraw it when you need it. Am I right? You just took your phone and just take your phone. You need it. You withdraw, you transfer. Everything that you have ever need. You need it. You withdraw, you transfer. Everything that you have ever need. Younger in though that you will ever need in life. Has been deposited to you. How? By his divine power. By the Holy Spirit. For all of this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him. That's why you go to know the Bible. If you don't know the Bible, you will not know that everything that you ever need has been deposited to you by his divine power. He has lavished. It's like he has given in abundance. Just through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. When you know the Bible, it says, been knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through his glorious manifestation of his goodness. Listen church, you better know the way it, because God has already given you things. When you don't search these things, the Bible says it is, for, it is the glory of the, of the Lord to hide a matter. But it is the glory of kings to search out the matter. God hides it. Your duty is to search it. By the knowledge, by the Bible says, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. When you don't know, this is the treasure, Basaloa. This is the treasure. This is the treasure. When you don't know this thing, you are broke. I don't care how much money you have, you are broke. The prophets will come and take it one day. I'm telling you, they'll, take, they'll leave you broke because you don't know this. This is treasure. Get to know this. No man will lie to you. I will not lie to you. If, I, if, I, if I'm here, I lie to you, you will see it. Get to know this. This is treasure. When you don't know it, you're broke. I don't care how much money you have, you lose it. You lose it. You shout, I receive. I receive. Receive I receive. Receive money, I receive. You'll be shouting, I receive. So I'm teaching you not to shout, I receive. Hmm? I'm teaching you. I said, God has deposited inside you. He, it's, it's not something that you must pray about. It's given. Take it out. Take it out. Who? Oh. Look, 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 look at verse 4. It says, we are partakers of the divine nature. Look at that. 
as a result of the <laughs> you know I, one day I was reading the book of Revelation and as I, as, as I was reading chapter 1 and I said this is the revelation of Jesus Christ and I stopped there and I was so happy you know why, why, why I was so happy because it, I, I, at, at that time I, it has been lied to me that the, the book of Revelation is, is something upside. and I said no 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 this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. I said, oh, let me get to know Jesus. And I found him there. Hallelujah. I found him. Hmm. The revelation, look at it. As a result of verse 3. I, I, I was just telling you Revelation 1, just to show you this as a result of this. As a, as a result of this, he has given you magnificent promise that are beyond all money, beyond all price. So through the power of this tremendous promise, you can experience partnership with the divine nature. Oh. <laughs> By which you escape the corruption that is in the world. As a result, as a result, as a result of God depositing to you, as a result of Kulukula Fagele, Ukwalsile, Gogolo Yoksingala, as a result of this, as a result, He has given you magnificent promises that you might be participators of the divine nature. Do you know what it means to partake in the divine things of God? That means angels are at your service. As I was praying in the morning, I'm, I'm sitting here praying. And then, and then a guy walk here, like, just walk, just walk. You know. I say, oh, and then I say, oh, then he disappears. I say, oh God, thank God that there are angels in this place. I'm just praying here, sitting here, and then the guy walk. Then I'm like, and it disappears. I say, okay, okay, okay. I know now. I, that means I participate in the divine things. When you are here, the angels are here. Oh, church. Think about this. Think about this. Think about this. When you are a child of God, you are born again. You are born again. You are born again like you are born again. God gives you deposit things to you. Not only that, then he gives you angels to encamp around you like this. See, when, I, when, when the Bible says the angels of the Lord encamp around you, that means they do a circle. Umahamba, Jack Sakel, Wahamba, Tik Jack Sakel, Jack Sakel, they are they are all around you. They are your bodyguards. That is what it means to participate on divine things. Your words are no longer ordinary words. Your words are full of power. Are you hearing me? Your prayers are not ordinary prayers. The Bible says God does not hear the prayers of a sinner. No, you are no longer a sinner. You are a righteous man. When you pray, God hears your prayer. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? You participate in divine things. When you read the Bible, now you understand what you are reading. It's no longer a mystery to you because you are what? You are participating on divine things. Hey, I'm giving you meat. Eh? I, I want you to, 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 to go out eh, from baby stage. Eh? Uh, strong meat belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use by reason of use, have their senses exercised. This is strong meat. You must chew it. And, and, and use it. This is treasure. You get to know this as a young person. I tell you, you can change the world. You can shake the world. I'm looking for people who can shake the world. Eh? Shake the universe. Shake the world. Because of the word of God. The word of God. This world is looking for people who believe, who just believe the way. Who just believe the Bible. Am I in the right church? Eh? Am I in the right church? Eh? Am I in the right church? Eh? Am I in the right church? If I'm in the right church, shout amen. amen! Listen, the verse I gave you, if you can just meditate on them and speak them. Listen, now, 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 you say, Pastor, now you say, I, 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 I must fulfill my test. I, I mean, God knows about my destiny, the blah, 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 all these things, all the days are written for me. Now, what must I do now? 
Very easy. Number one, I say study, meditate the word. Number two, pray a lot in tongues. Yeah. When you pray a lot in tongues, you are propelling yourself to your divine destiny. And the third one is what we're going to be doing now. Now we're going to be doing this thing. The third one. The third one. See, you, you, you better discipline yourself. Words are powerful. That one is I want us to say who we are until our heart. Listen to this. You say who you are, what God has said you are, what God has done. Why do you say that? Not because God will do it. No. It is for you because your mind and your heart don't align with your speech. So, you are saying it so that your mind and your spirit and your and your heart, if they are one, they are one. That's what is called faith. Oh. Faith is an alignment of your mind. Remember when I told you about sanctifying your mind? Because now you are seeing a clear picture. You speak, you see, you see, you speak, you speak, you see, you see, you speak. Ah, church. That day you can see it. Pella, you see with imagination. When you see it, if you can imagine the word of God and you see the word of God, you speak it from your heart. Oh, there's no demon of hell that can stand against you. Am I in a right church? Am I, number one, number one, you meditate on this thing. Why do you meditate on this thing? To sanctify your mind. So that your mind can align with your heart. Are you hearing me? Then you begin to speak it. You speak it. You speak it until it becomes one of, one, one of you. It's like when you are, okay, have you ever heard people who say you are what you eat? Eh? Eh? A lot of fat people, not all of them, they were born fat. They are fat because of what they eat. Not that they were born fat. It's not true. They are what they eat. The men, by name of what they drink. It's the truth. What they? They are what they drink. What you put in is going to come out. So when you put in the word of God inside you, it's going to come out. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's going to come out. It's going to come out. You are what you eat. Now, 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 now if, you, if you start meditating on this thing, what I'm taking, I, I'm telling you something very important now. I'm saying to you, this is the verse that you must say to yourself. You start the whole week, you meditate on them, you speak them sooner or later. Things change. Let, let me tell you, Satan is going to attack you when you go home. Oh. Remember, you have come here. We have left things that are not in alignment. Ne? And then you, you, you receive the word, you feel goosebumps. Ah! Then when you go home, the situation is still the same. And then when it does that, that's when you need that alignment. Your mouth, your heart, your mind. Meditation, speaking. You are aligning your spirit. The minute you align your spirit, there's what you call a law of attraction. You now attract angelic beings. All along, the angels. Your fear. Your fear. Your fear has repelled the angelic. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Now. What you do when you meditate on the word of God? What you do? You are aligning your mouth, your heart. You are attracting them again. 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 Then what you are doing? You are, uh, you are erecting holy fire. The holy fire, what it does? When you speak the word, your mind, your heart, Satan is afraid of faith. Holy fire comes. Demons are being repelled. The angels come. What do they do? They call one another. They call on another. They call on another. Angels of prosperity come. You don't have to pray for money. They come. Angels of health, they come. Angels of this. And then your destiny is become aligned. 
they begin to read your book. When you speak in other tongues, what do you do when you speak in other tongues? You are actually reading the book written concerning you. Angels for your destiny come. They hold you by your hand. You don't even know. You don't even see. They are taking you to the people. Suddenly, you are going. You are meeting someone that you never thought you shall meet. You are getting to an office. You are meeting someone. Uh, I, I was reading the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. As I was reading Luke, the Bible says, Some, Sim, there's a man by the name of Simeon. When baby Jesus was presented, the Bible says, by the Holy Spirit prompted Simeon to meet baby Jesus. At that hour, divine timing. The Bible says, even at that time, Anna came, divine timing. Let me tell you something. When you do what I'm telling you, all things will align themselves to their original position. You're going to frame your world to its original position. But when you don't do it, listen, let, let me tell you something, church. You better repel your fears. I'm telling you, you've got fears. Many of you said and have made you to put fears. You better repel those fears and I'm showing you how. Satan put a lot of fears. A papa told today, they said there are people love about Busha, Banjo, and Yawanda, and all those things. Satan put fears. Women abuse put fears. But when you pray the other tongues, the angelic goes to you 24 hours a day. When they come, they want to rape you. Suddenly, you're forgetting something, you go. Who wants to be figure it out? You don't understand. You don't understand. You'll meet people that you never thought you shall meet. Mm. God will place you to places that we're supposed to be. Maybe you are here. Things don't go your way, but today you are correcting it. I say you are correcting it. I say you are correcting it. Let's stand up. I want us to shout and begin to declare the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did, did you hear the word? Ah, ah, Jesus. The church of Jesus Christ.